Today I'm going to discuss partial correlations and uh, talk about the differences between a usual or conventional correlation with them. The data that I'm going to use for this presentation is the data set that uh, I have gotten from uh, Dr. Melvin Chan, which is uh, collected in a research study called CORE 2016, which is a nationwide uh, uh, research project in Singapore. So the data that uh, I'm going to use in this presentation is quite extensive, but I'm going to focus on two variables for the time being. One variable is the situational writing task fulfillment, and the other one is situational writing language. So it's a, langu it's a writing assessment test which uh, is uh, evaluated or which is scored using two categories, task fulfillment and language. Uh, in addition to that, I have another variable here, which is comprehension score. And my th uh, th theoretical framework tells me that uh, uh, this um, comprehension level of students can affect their writing performance. And as a result, if these two scores on the writing test have any correlations, it could be affected by their comprehension score. So what I would like to do is to look into the correlation coefficient of these two variables uh, per se and in a, in a separate study to look into the correlation between the two variables while partialing out the uh, relation the the effect of a third variable in that analysis so that's what we call a partial correlation in order to run partial correlation analysis we have to go to analyze we go to correlate and we have several options here, bivariate, partial, distances, and we're going to choose partial correlations. Click on this, and in this menu, as you see, there are, uh, there are a lot of variables, which uh, I have in my data sheet. What I would need to do here is to move the main variables, that's these two, uh, task fulfillment and language, to the variables pane here. So I'm going to do that, uh, task fulfillment and the language so the variables uh, pane has been uh, populated and uh, what I'm going to control for as I mentioned before is comprehension if your theoretical framework allows you to control for other variables feel free to move other variables here as well if you have a different data set for example if you feel that grammar score uh, should be moved to the control uh, uh, part you can uh, populate control 4 section with grammar or even with vocabulary or other variables. For the time being, I don't think that my theoretical framework would justify that. But uh, as I have discussed in some videos in my channel, some theories of uh, writing, actually most of them, uh, allow me to assume that reading comprehension is a variable that has relationships with writing and as a result, what I would like to do is to control for the effect of reading comprehension on the writing scores of students in this correlation analysis. So the steps are quite easy and straightforward. You just need to go to Options, click on this, and choose Statistics, uh, Means and Standard Deviations, and Zero Order Correlations. And then you can continue doing the analysis. The reason why we choose zero order correlations is that the effect of uh, this variable on the, r the correlation between the two main variables will not be taken into account first. So let's go ahead and let me show you what I mean by that. Continue and then leave everything else as is and click OK. And this uh, output window pops up. In the descriptive statistics you can see the mean score of the different variables that you have put into your analysis. For example, the task fulfillment is 4.69 with a standard deviation with a standard deviation of 2.083 and this is the the sample size which is uh, 1805 which makes a pretty large sample actually. Uh, now the other thing that we can look at here would be the mean score of language which is 7.9 which is pretty larger than the mean score of this one and also the comprehension score which is 3.69 
note that it's important for our variables, uh, three of them here, to be continuous or on an interval or ratio scale. That's one of the most important assumptions of correlation analysis. Uh, and this kind of partial correlation is a parametric correlation analysis. And as a result, uh, these variables should also be checked for their uh, the meeting of the requirement of parametric analysis. And by that, I mean we should look at the normality of the data. So we should look at the skewness and kurtosis variables as well. Uh, I have discussed those in separate videos. I will uh, leave their links in the comments section or around this video as you're watching. And if you're interested, just take a look at them. So we assume that these are normally distributed and they are on an interval scale or a ratio scale. Of course, um, this is definitely an interval scale. And then the correlations that you see in, the, in, these, in this box make sense. So let's go through this box quickly and, and make sense of it. First of all, zero order correlation, uh, as has been shown here, there is a co uh, it's pretty much like uh, simple or conventional correlation where th the relationship between the three variables is investigated. The first observation here is that there is a significant correlation between situational writing, uh, the language score, and uh, task fulfillment, which is 0 0.57. And how do we know it's significant? Because we can look at the significance level, the p-value, which is pretty small. Uh, it's much smaller than 0 0.05 and even 0 0.00001. It's, it's pretty small. So uh, as you can see from that little pop-up window, uh, it's very small. Now the correlation between task fulfillment and comprehension score is also significant uh, with a very small p-value. In addition, the correlation between uh, the comprehension score and uh, the situational writing language is, uh, let me find that, uh, is, is also, uh, it's here, right here, is also significant, actually is higher uh, and is statistically significant is 0 0.295, which is higher than uh, 0 0.27. Uh, and therefore, there is a correlation between all three variables. And when we are encountering such a situation, uh, there is a high likelihood that this variable, which we're going to partial out, uh, could have an impact on the relationship or the correlation between these two main variables. And this is very obvious from this window. This window is basically this part of the window. Uh, this refers to uh, this correlation is is the partial correlation between uh, situational writing language and situational writing task fulfillment. As you see, after removing the impact of comprehension score, the correlation drops to 0 0.533, which is still statistically significant, but it's smaller than the, the previous correlation which we identified, which was 0 0.57. So it provides some uh, uh, quantitative or empirical evidence for my theoretical framework that assumed that there will be a connection between these three variables. And as a researcher, if I want to investigate the, the correlation or the association between these two main variables uh, without uh, uh, allowing this to have an impact on the correlation between these two, I will need to partial this out. So let's wrap it up. Uh, a partial correlation analysis is a kind of correlation analysis in which you partial out or control for the effect of uh, the third or a number of variables that would affect the correlation between two or more variables. Uh, there are two assumptions, at least two assumptions, for partial correlation analysis. One is that the variables are supposed to be normally distributed, and two is that the variables are supposed to be uh, ratio or interval scales. They're also known as continuous variables. So for this analysis, I suppose these uh, assumptions are met and so these correlations are reliable and we can uh, rely on them. 
Um, so that brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.